What's up Yu-Gi-Oh players, this is the RJB0 coming at you from the Evergreen State on this very happy Tuesday night, which is happy because of the results of YCS Long Beach, where Rabbit only got one slot in the top four and was the only one of the big three decks that made it that far. Um, but I was a little bit disappointed to see that Heroes were the only decks in the top four that did not run tour guides, and I just hate tour guide as a card. But it brings up the point that tour guide is a fantastic card because it is a powerful floater, and that's what I want to talk about tonight. Um, is the fact that Yu-Gi-Oh is a game dominated by floaters, and in order for a deck to be truly good in this game right now, you have to be able to run floaters. And for those of you who don't know what floaters are, they're any monster who, by playing them, you lose zero card advantage. And you can do that by searching, by drawing, by summoning from your deck or your graveyard. Your hand does not count. Um, or by adding cards from your banish zone to your hand or your graveyard to your hand. Anything like that. Um, and the advantages of floaters are that they do a lot of deck thinning, they make for fast plays, um, they allow you to recycle, and first and foremost, they are an easy plus one that don't require you to go for big plays. They add field presence, and then they replace themselves with card advantage. That is a plus one. Um, and really, every deck that's going on right now, that's being big, uses floaters. And I, except, I feel like there are two ex two exceptions to that, which are Malefics and Glads. Glads don't even really work from the hand; they work from the deck, and then use the hand for like support. And Malefics are often criticized for having troubles with consistency. Um, and that probably has something to do with the fact that they lack floaters. So if you're going into using an original deck or an old deck, make sure that you are make, taking advantage of your floaters. Because that is what really gets you by in the game right now. So for the people who are trying to go for original decks, I decided to look at a couple of floaters that I like that I think are interesting. Um, that you can use. And remember, the ones I'm going over are just a few. There are so many floaters out there. Um, one is Dracwaiba that is seen play in Rabbit and Ninja, which this is splashable in a lot of decks because it allows you to go for Logyar Dolka just by running over a monster. And that's very similar to Flamvel Fire Dog which allows you to go for level 8 synchros just by running over a monster. So those are excellent floaters. Uh, Photon Saber Tiger and Tengu both work really well in similar decks, um, like TG Stun and others like that that use Horn of the Phantom Beast and Skill Drain. Um, the reason why Photon Saber Tiger works nicely with Skill Drain is it loses 700 attack if there's not another Photon Saber Tiger on the field, but that doesn't happen if there's Skill Drain out. Um, and Tengu, even though it got hit by the format, it's still really good in at 2. It's still a plus 1. Um, and you can use it with Horn of the Phantom Beast, which makes it really excellent. Uh, of course, there are Sangin and Goblin Zombie. Goblin Zombie are is the reason why zombies aren't totally dead. You have to run at least two of this because this gets you every zombie play possible. Um, there is also Hanzo, which is a new one that's a little like the new Stratos. These two cards are very similar. Hanzo works very nicely in a, very, in a stun way where you run three Hanzo and then maybe and three Super Trans and maybe two Light Pulsars. Um, or the two or three light pulsars, that makes for a really good stun engine that you can put, that you can tech other cards into. Of course, Stratos works with the heroes. Gravekeeper Spy, I've already explained how that can make an engine in the last um, 
in a previous video, TGs and gadgets are excellent floater archetypes. They are all floaters. Two copies of each gadget in combination with other cards and decks can make for a really consistent and really fun and skillful deck. Um, and I'll put up my profile for Gadget Ninjas once I, once I get all my gadgets. Um, TGs also do the same thing. You've got Magical Merchant. This is one I really like because it works especially well in combination with Flamvels, where not only does it add the card from your deck to your hand, the Spell or Trap card, but it deck thins monsters which in a chaos or flamvel or junk situation works really well um, and it makes your deck a lot more consistent. Um, a couple of other ones that I like a lot, Cyber Valley is a really excellent floater because it can block attacks and draw a card and or well it can basically skip part of your opponent's turn and allow you to draw a card or you can get extra card advantage by banishing it with another monster. Dialk, especially with the Chaos, is a really good floater. Dandelion isn't quite as good anymore because of the lack of synchro plays going around. Sacred Crane is an interesting one, because when it's special summoned in any way, you draw a card. You can do that with Summoner Monk. A couple that work in combo, Junk Synchron and Doppel Warrior and Tuning Wear. Tuning Wear is a floater because when it's synchroed with anything, you draw a card with it, um, Doppel Warrior summons tokens to your side of the field, and Junk Synchron can summon any of them from the graveyard. Um, another favorite pair of mine are Dekoichi and Salvo. Dekoichi allows you to draw a card, and then Salvo allows you to summon Dekoichi from your grave. Um, and go for big synchro plays. There are also um, floater bosses. There are cards like Bure, which allows you, or not Bure, Burrito, which allows you to draw a card um, when its effect goes off. Um, and it also, when it's summoned, summons another Karakuri from your deck. There is Gores, which doubles field presence when it's summoned, and Christia, when it's summoned by its effect, adds cards from your graveyard to your hand. So any one of those are excellent to put into decks. And remember that if you can utilize your floaters, you can make an engine, a working engine, a good working engine, out of pretty much anything. Um, so don't forget to subscribe, and let me know what you think in the comments. And until my next video, this is the RJB0 signing out.